Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. So I am back home again, which means that now we're going to take a closer look at this here GTX 980 Ti G1 Gaming from Gigabyte. I have already made a PCB overview of this card, and in that overview I have mentioned that I got the card in a dead state. And yeah, so there won't be a typical uh, troubleshooting steps part in this video because I have already figured out what uh, is wrong with the card, it's fairly easy. This card is kind of known for having this issue, but um, you can see that the card is no longer completely, uh, well, in one piece, and we'll get into that later. So, the issue with this card is, uh, it happens quite uh, quite a lot, is that the memory VRM over here uh, blows up, and that's exactly what happened. So you can see... There used to be a dual NFET here, that dual NFET uh, exploded and it actually welded itself to the power plane, so a bit of 12 volt power plane went with it. And also these two bridge resistors right here uh, burnt out, like I, these were not even on the card anymore when I got it, so... Yeah, like, I mean, it doesn't look like they got desoldered, these probably, like, either burnt and fell off or got broken off later. Um, and that's pretty much the only issue, like, you remove that uh, dead dual NFET, you replace it, like you have a completely fine unused pad right here, which is actually why it breaks down. Like there's a uh, there's the gaming extreme from Gigabyte, which has the same memory VRM, except it has both the dual NFETs populated, and on that the memory VRM doesn't blow up. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so this dual NFET blew up, and funnily enough, um, like th this phase is connected to the PCI Express slot for power, and we have a fuse right here. Uh, that's a 10 amp fuse, and that fuse actually is alive. That one didn't blow up. The fuse is okay. Um, but these two bridge resistors burned out, so I guess the card has redundant fuses, uh, because that's a better fuse than the actual fuse over here. Um, but yeah, so basically, all you have to do, pull to that dual, that dual end fed, put a new one on, like this is probably actually easy to repair because the, like you just need to put like a little bit of copper layer here again, like you could probably actually re repair this, uh, just like put uh, a bit of conductive material here as a 12 volt power plane, you could probably reuse this footprint as well, um, or just use the left one, I, like I would have realistically just populated both the things so it never blows up again, um, but yeah, and then you would put like two zero ohm resistors over here, um, because these, um, these bridge resistors are used to select from where this phase receives power. So if you connect these two, which is what the card usually comes with, it's PCI Express slot. And if you connect these two instead, uh, it gets its power from one of the eight pins. So, yeah, you would have to uh, just kind of short that. You don't even need resistors, could just put a solder bridge uh, over it and then like put a new dual end fit on. And then theoretically the card would be repaired. Um, which is what I would have gotten had I bought the card earlier, because I'm pretty sure this is the exact same card that I saw for sale for like 10 euros more than I ultimately got it, um, because I saw this exact card for sale, and it said that this exact phase was blown up, like there was even an image of the two bridge resistors being burned and the MOSFET having a bulge in it, and I didn't buy it because at that time I was like, I, I, I wasn't aware that, you know, like I knew that it has a fuse, but it, because I saw that burn stuff, I was like, uh, that, like, the thing is, when memory VRMs die, they usually kill memory modules and sometimes also the core. So if you have a dead memory VRM, especially on like a GTX 10 series card, the core is usually dead. And if the core is dead, then well, don't buy it. That's why I didn't buy the card. Um, and then, a few days later, I saw this card for sale, which didn't have any mention of like burnt stuff on the PCB. There weren't any pictures of burnt stuff on the PCB. The only description was, turns on but no image. So at that point, I didn't know that this was probably that exact same card. Um, and turns on but no image is a very straightforward diagnosis for this card because there's only one fuse on the PCI Express slot. And uh, the PCI Express slot feeds this memory phase and I think one core phase. Uh, and the eight pins do not have fuses on this card. So the only way how this thing can turn on but no image is either this fuse is blown and this doesn't get power, or this uh, one phase of this doesn't get power, and therefore the card doesn't run. Um, or um, there's like a missing enable signal somewhere on the PWM controller. So that's like the two scenarios where this thing could turn on but no image. 
And because this thing is known for like blowing up this memory phase, which is connected to the PCI Express slot, I put one and one together and was like, oh, this fuse is probably blown. That MOSFET is probably dead. Replace fuse, replace MOSFET, working 980 Ti. That's why I bought it for a price that's actually kind of high for a uh, dead card. Um, so it was 60 euros for this thing, which I've been told is a lot in outside of Germany. Like inside of Germany, this was the cheapest 980 Ti that you could buy. Outside of Germany, apparently the prices are like three times lower. Um, so our used market sucks right now. But anyway, I was very positively that this fuse was gonna be dead and there was this that dual end fed and I would just have to replace the fuse, replace the dual end fed and we're good. And more or less that's what I got. Like this fuse blew instead of this fuse, but I still had this dead dual end fed and theoretically the only thing I would have to do is like get new fuse, replace dual end fed, working on a DTI. Um, yeah, that's, I'm very sure what, what I would have gotten if I had bought the card before the person before me bought it and then resold it a few days later for 10 euros less because they did this. So, um, I didn't just pull this dead dual end fed. I also had to pull, ah, uh, come here, five of the memory chips because someone, like the person that I bought this card from, I'm pretty sure bought the card before when I saw it for a slightly higher price, got the card, got as far as, like I don't actually know if they diagnosed the short circuit because these could have just fallen off, like burned resistors, like if a small SMD component burns, it usually just kind of falls off the card if you like touch it slightly. So I don't know if they remove these, this does, like, the pads do not look like it got desoldered, so best case, these got ripped off. Um, but yeah. And that person could not have possibly ever turned this card on and gotten an image out of it. Because the dead dual end fed was still on the card when I got it. Which means that, like, because this burn, there's no 12 volt power going into it anymore, but this being a dual end fed still means that it was shorting the output to ground, which means that even though this phase was working, this thing would basically drain all the voltage to zero, so the memory VRM never really worked on the card, like you might have gotten like 100 millivolts out of it or something. But the vast majority of the current would just go through the du dead dual end fed back to ground before it ever goes to powering the memory. So this card never put out an image, and what the person that got the card thought was like they, the one part of the diagnosis they got right is that something's wrong with the memory system um, but instead of looking you know for like the burnt area and figuring out why it's but like the, literally the, the dual end fed had a bulge in it like I don't know if you can still see it kind of scratched it when removing it yeah you can see there's like a bulge in it if it would focus that is yeah, like you can see there's a bulge in a dual end fed, like that's usually a dead giveaway that the component is dead. Um, yeah, that, 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 that didn't care, that, the guy didn't care for that, like the, the most, like he might have ripped those off, they might have just fallen off, but he didn't do anything about the dead dual end fed. Like, yeah, it was welded to the PCB, which makes removing difficult, but you could also just pull the inductor, which is, like it's an SMD inductor, you just need hot air and there you go, like you might have removed this plastic bit, like there wasn't, like, this plastic bit was burnt. These two are fine, so there was no hot air in this area. Um, also, the card is drenched in solder, uh, in, uh, like, flux. You can see the back plate here. The back of the PCB looks about the same. Like, this thing got drenched in flux because, as you can see, there's memory chips that are dead. Well, actually, there's this one memory chip that's actually dead because I removed the dual end fed and now the card actually runs and puts out an image and I was able to run mats on it and this thing is dead. Which makes sense because when the memory VRM dies it usually kills memory chips and this one's the closest to the memory VRM so this one saw the highest voltage so this one probably died. Like uh, all the, like this is dead and all the other modules are okay, those had no errors. And as for why I removed these is because the guy who had the card before me you know, didn't think about like removing the short circuit, he just started blindly removing memory modules and then soldering them back once it didn't change anything. And of course he didn't solder them back properly. Um, like, they're... 
yeah, just let, let's just take a look at the BGA. You see this? Not just are there missing pads, the, there are ripped traces. Traces ripped out of the PCB, and those are data lines, so you can see how these go to the GPU. Like, and not just here, like, uh, this one actually doesn't look too bad. This one has some slight damage and one missing pad. Uh, this one also has some slight damage, and here are no more ripped traces. Like, actually, this module down here was literally not even, like, flush to the card. It, it was at an angle, like, the left side was contacting the PCB, and on the right side, all the BGA balls were in the air. That's how bad the soldering was. And because we are seeing rep traces, the per when he pulled the modules off, he probably didn't like wait long enough and pulled it off with force, and then the traces went. Um, yeah. So, instead of just replacing this and replacing this, we are now looking at replacing this, repairing traces and pads here, the, replacing this, re, uh, repairing pad here, replacing this, replacing this, repairing traces and pads here, and also replacing this. New memory modules, like this is 4 gigabit Hynix MFR, these things cost about 10 euros per module. So I need to get 6 new ones, how much did I pay for the card? 60 euros, how much do the modules cost? 60 euros plus shipping and import. No, and then I still need to do trace and pad repair. So, you can probably guess what's going to happen to this card. Now, I am not fixing this. It's not worth it. They, like, I can just buy another 980 Ti and hope I get a better card. Like, a card in a better state than this. Because, like, I might have gotten the card to the point where it can put out an image again. But, like, two have ripped out traces. Um, one here has a missing pad, and then these two need to be resolded. And like, even like, I'm yeah, like also the memory modules. You can see memory module side. There's also missing pads. Like, I can't pro I, like I might be able to reuse some of the memory modules, but I can't reuse all of them. And at this point, I'm like, yeah, if I was the first guy to get this card, that was probably going to be a fix. But I am not repairing traces, pads, and paying for new memory modules, which are all repair steps that I have never done before, so the rate of success is going to be very low. And that's a lot of money and time to throw at something with a very low success rate. So, there's three things that I could do with the card. Option one, sell it to someone who can do trace repair. Option two, keep it until I've learned how to do all this and are confident I can repair the card. Or three, cut the thing in half and get an 8-phase V-Core E-Power. I was thinking about option three um, because this card has like a nice layout for actually being an E-Power. I first thought, um, because on the back it has a very convenient ground and a V-Core stripe, if I could just remove the capacitors on the back, um, remove the solder mask and then have two copper plates here, Problem is, it's gonna be kind of difficult to solder on. So what I'm probably gonna do is remove the well. Uh, well, I could try if I just remove the first row of capacitors here, because then I'm gonna have like ground V core, ground V core, ground V core. That's gonna be easier to solder to. But it's not a whole lot of area. I might have to remove both rows, or maybe first row here and then the one on the back, and then have like one plate on each side. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, I've already also looked into the controller, so the NCP81174 only needs 12 volts and enable 12 volt, like, I, I can just connect the 12 volt power plane to this, and then all the 12 volt power will come from here. Um, so this thing will already have VCC, and it only needs enable at that point, and then the card should just work, except maybe I need to, like, do something to a power state pin, but... Usually for, well, actually, it really depends on what controller you have, and I haven't made any power with this controller uh, before. But uh, the other e-powers I've made, the V-Core VRM was uh, working with all the phases. Uh, on the DirectSU 2 e-powers, only one memory phase was working, though. So that needs a power state mod. Um, but I'm not going to have the memory VRM on this as a priority anyway, because, like, yeah, not. I could repair that, but eh. This is also kind of hard, like, because I would have to get VMEM from here, like, remove those uh, 
capacitors, so gonna be kinda hard. But mainly a uh, uh, V-Core E-Power, because this is an 8 phase with 50 amp DR MOSs. This can power like a 680 or 980 non-TI, um, like um, mid-range uh, 28 nanometer GPUs should work just fine on that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't really have a card where I could put this on yet, which is why I'm not cutting it up yet, because I might still decide to sell it to someone who can do trace repair, because I know there's people out there that can do this. So I, I might just be putting it on eBay and then going like, yep, someone messed with the memory traces, you're gonna have to do that, you're gonna have to repair that, and then the card will work. Because vCore VRM works, memory VRM is re repairable, GPU core, from what I can tell, works also. Like, um, like it boots into Windows, it just doesn't run the driver because, well, half the memory is missing. Um, but, like, uh, the core seems to be working just fine, from what I can tell. So, like, at least you could salvage the core off of this. This thing actually has, like, a 66% AC quality. So that's total value, so the better than value is probably in, like, the 70 to 80% range. So this is, seems to be a pretty good core. This might be, like, a 1500 MHz core. Uh, if you can, like, pull the core and put it onto... I don't know. I, I know Bullseye has a 980 Ti Kingpin where the core was dead and he pulled it. So he, he can at least pull cores. I don't know if he can resolder them, but maybe I, sh I should ask him if he wants the card. Like, uh, like if, if he wants the card, I'm just gonna cut the card, make my e-power, and he gets the core for his 980 Ti Kingpin if he wants it. Maybe I'll ask him about that. Otherwise, it, this might end up on eBay for someone who can do trace repair. But yeah, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, there was not really any way how I could have known that someone messed with the memory on this card. Um, but yeah, unlucky, like, such is life, like, uh, sometimes people do stupid things to graphics cards because they think they can repair them and they don't know what they're doing. Um, this is one of them, so this 980 Ti, like, it, if the traces weren't bad, like, if the pa traces and pads weren't completely destroyed on this card, I would probably g I could give this, like, a doable uh, repair thing, because, like, I, I, I would have just kept this until I get another 980 Ti, like, something else that has 4 gigabit Hynix MFR modules, and I would have just soldered that onto this card and then hope that it works. But because they're ripped traces and pads, no, like, I, I do not have the equipment to repair that, and I don't even know how I would do that. Like, that's so small. I, I don't think any of my equipment works with something that small. So, yeah. Uh, can this card be repaired? Yeah. Am I gonna do it? No. Uh, because it's just not worth it. Um, so. Yeah, unlucky 980 Ti. Um, maybe I, I'll find a new one, because I, like, I have the Zoltec 980 Ti, but the VRM on that one is kinda bad, and I don't want to e-power that card, so I'm kinda not wanting to push that one that far, but this VRM, like, this card, I would've e-powered that, like, just fine, like, the, this, like, the, I put've one, like, thing is, I, c I have more of these DR monsters, so if they blow up, I can actually repair the card a couple times, and if the VRM is just ho hopelessly underpowered, I can just put an ePower 5 on this. Because, uh, yeah. I just like the Zoltec card because it's a kind of a rare model and I really like the heatsink it came with. So I want to keep the stock heatsink on that card. Um, but this, like, I also like the heatsink on this one. But uh, these these are really easy to come by. The Zoltec Amp Omega is uh, not all that common. But yeah. So. Yeah, I I might get another 980 Ti if I find one for cheap. Maybe the exact same one, because, like, the memory VRM dies a lot on these. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I've, I've been meaning to do an outro, like, four minutes ago. So, anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. That being, don't mess with memory if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, and until next time, goodbye.